Hail and Pace, Fry and Laurie, Cannon and Ball, The Crankies, Dumb and Dumber, Millie Vanilli, The Two Ronnies, Morgan and Wise, Reeves and Mortimer, The Chuckle Brothers, Michael Jackson, Mike and Bernie Winters, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Who's Mike and Bernie Winters? No idea. Adam and Joe, Mitchell and Webb, Cape Dame, Smith and Jones, Little and Large, Trevor and Simon, Mel and Sue, Lauren Hardy, Wizard and Chips, <laughs> Ant and Deck, Cheech and Chong, Dick and Dom, Penn and Teller, The Cohen Brothers, Ham and Mustard, The Socks I'm Wearing, Miley Cyrus, Wham! And now you can add Louis and Megman to the list. It's crazier than dressing your nan up as a zebra, taking her on a day trip to the local zoo, and throwing her head first into the lion enclosure because she keeps stealing your bourbon creams whilst watching Countdown. It's the Louie and Megman Show! This week, we talk camping and festivals. So, yeah, this is episode three. This is all about camping. We've got, uh, we're joined by Stephen Merritt, a.k.a. Megman. Say hello, Steve. Hello. And uh, me, Louis Lane, and a bulldog called Cass, who sat on the floor relaxing, getting strokes around the back of the neck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We've got some camping facts here, right? So camping the, facts. Yeah. yeah. The history of recreational camping is often traced, traced back to Thomas here I'm holding, British travelling tailor, but he was actually first popularised in the UK on the River Thames. I'm glad that they worded it properly because if it was in the Red River terms, that would have been absolute fucking madness. Uh, that would have been crazy. Yeah. I thought you have one of those tent dinghy things, you know, that they have. Yeah, can you actually camp on the on the, on the the water lock, you know what I mean? Have they actually done that? Yeah, it's bad boating, isn't it? Mm, yeah, but I was thinking like, you know, an actual sort of tent. Well, sort yeah, of. yeah, you can get them things to float like kind of, like a safety looking raft thing. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, waking up on the water lock, huh? But just imagine if you had one and you put it, like, you know, on solid earth and everything, and someone decided to pick it up during the night when you're in there and just shift it onto the water. You wake up on the River Thames. Where the fuck? Hello. Now we're going to get a loaf of bread now. Crazy. But, um, yeah, the bloke who invented it is said by the... Uh, that was the first popularised in the River Thames by the 1880s. Large numbers of visitors took part in the pastime. 1880s. But camping. I no, never thought of camping before then. No. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. No, apparently, right, so that's the first, um, re- like, recreational camping, but it said it was first mentioned in the, a tent is mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 4.20. Uh, J- Jabel? 4.20. Four, yeah, that's that, the verse. Uh, yeah. So you go to that, uh, Jabel is, describes the, the first to live in tents. Like in the so, Bible? Mm-hmm. And that was written... Um, if you're a scientist, most probably six million years ago, or if you're a firm believer of religion, five thousand years ago. <laughs> so, but you know, it was a story from the Bible that actually put me off religion yeah. altogether. Like it was religious studies in school, and um, there was this story she told me in religious education where they were they were camping in tents, sleeping in tents, and um, it was like a big army, like you know, and uh, someone sounded the trumpet by mistake. Some fucking trigger happy idiot on his trumpet. <laughs> and then they thought, oh, fucking hell, it's war, you know. So they all started fighting, but they were all fighting each other. And they they, they so killed... Like, be, like, so like Red Festival like this. Yeah, yeah, so there was like 30,000 of them, and they all killed each other in the night because they couldn't see each other. That was the story. And I thought, hang about. If that was me, I'd get to about two people, like slapping... I'd slap about two people and then be like, hang about, isn't that? Isn't that, isn't that John? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. You fucking recognise each other, no matter how dark it is. Like you know, right. hang about lads, but no, they killed they they killed each other. Apparently, and it put me off the Bible for life. <laughs> I thought it's bollocks. I've never heard that story. You never heard it? No. Which is most of the only story I heard from the Bible. Obviously, you got Adam and Eve and all that sort of stuff. Crazy. So married people are more likely to have sex while camping than at home. Married people. Hmm. I can't say that camping is the ideal time drop for sex, really, is it? You have to take loads of wet wipes and shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Depends what you're into, I suppose. Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, mate. Yeah, walk, walk to sports and <laughs> go to the showers. Get a mop. <laughs> Get a mop. Squeegee. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I suppose like that's the thing about staying in places. Like you go to hotels. I've been like, you know, fucking where'd I go? Porth Call or something. And I thought, oh great, just finished the show. Two o'clock in the morning, nightclub stopped. Get some peace and quiet now. And the loudest couple ever. I were having sex next door. Oh wow! Like, no, not the rubber glove. <coughs> Get the other nipple. <laughs> yeah, just like what the hell is he doing to her in there? It was, it was mental. It was absolutely. I couldn't get a wink of sleep. I felt like knocking on their door and complaining, yeah. but like, you know, I just uh, you can't help it if you get stuck next to perverts, can you? No, you know. <laughs> and now, ladies and gents, a classic scene from the famous movie Short 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 Shank 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 Redemption. I didn't think much of Andy first time I laid eyes on him. Looked like a stiff breeze could blow him over. That was my first impression of the man. But then he introduced me to the Louis and Magmain show. Enjoy. I'm Morgan Freeman. Ever since I was a small boy, people liked the sound of my voice. This this is another fact. Getting killed by wildlife is one of the rarest ways to die at a national park. However, right, in 2010, someone got killed by an angry mountain goat. <laughs> yeah, Bill Oddie's out there looking for him now. It's a mug shot, like, sent off to Bill Oddie. But, like, I don't know. Are they really that fucking aggressive? Have you have you ever been attacked by a mountain goat? Um, no. Have you ever seen a mountain goat? Um, no. I think they've got horns. They have got horns, yeah. Mm. It must be a fucking old woman or something like that. You know? Someone just randomly walking through a field like it's charged by a fucking killer, killer goat. Yeah, I'm terrified of cows, see? I don't like cows. No. I can hate cows. Why? They just, they charge and shit like that. Only if you run... Yeah, but what you're supposed to do is, like, if there's, like, four of you, you're supposed to stand with your hands quite wide like that and just shout. Ah! Ah! Surely that would provoke Fuck. a charge, wouldn't it? Fucking come on, Mabel, I'll take you on. <laughs> Smack. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kick your fucking udders in. Yeah, I'll kick your fucking udders in. <laughs> yeah, like, um, there was this girl on Plenty of Fish um, dating website, and she she said she was a, fa- a farrier, oh, someone yeah. that shoes horses. Yeah. So I thought it'd be funny. And send her this fucking joke. It's like, oh, uh, I've never, I've never shooed an horse before, but I once nutted a donkey. <laughs> you know? And um, she, she came back. She's like, oh, um, why did you nut a donkey? She took me seriously. And um, I had to explain to her. It's like, you know, don't ring the RSPCA, love. No, this is a joke. So yeah, what do you think the number one purchase is for camping? Butt plugs. <laughs> um. Tent. See, I'd say that as well. Yeah. I was thinking that. Sleeping bag. It's actually a flashlight. That's the top seller of camping gear. But it's, 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 you know, fucking useless. Fifty percent of the time. Yeah, but well, that's it in the in the light. Yeah. You know? But um, yeah, I, I mean, I've had times where like I couldn't put my fucking tent up. I come, I I turn up at two o'clock in the morning trying to put the tent up in the pissing down rain in the dark. So yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good purchase. Yeah, headlamp, stuff. headlamp, lamps, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the the eye, the eye lamp, the eye lamp. After we <laughs> invent that one day, yeah. Um, men accounted right. This is um, men account for nearly seventy five percent of camping deaths at U.S. national parks. I find that um, I believe that in in its entirety because men do stupid shit. Yeah, and I think w- women are more. I'm going to bed now. Yeah, sensible. Yeah. So she goes to bed and you start fucking... You're drinking cans of fucking skull or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, right, we're going to climb up this cliff. So, yeah. In a dark. I'm going to I'm gonna down 10 cans of Subaru and climb up a mountain. And let the goat. So a group of owls. I, I, right, this is was on the camping facts, right? I don't know why this is on there. It must be something to do with, like, America because, like, they've got more fucking wildlife out there. 
you know, because like you ain't going to get attacked by baboons <laughs> in, in uh, the the Peak District or whatever they call it, you know. So um, yeah, Bracken Breakins in it. A fucking baboon. There's a gang of <laughs> a gang of gorillas. Yeah, a gang of gorillas. Uh, so a group of owls is called a parliament. But um, what's that going to do with anything? I, that's what I mean. This is on here, and I just thought I'd write it down. Um, crows is a, a, a murder, a murder of crows. Lemurs is a conspiracy. A conspiracy of lemurs in the garden. <laughs> Martha, come look at this. Um, falcons is a cast. Baboons is a congress. There's a congress of baboons heading for the co-op. So everything, everything like that's t- yeah, yeah, Every, like um, a gaggle of geese. Yeah. Yeah. A herd of swans. A herd of swans. There's a gaggle of lesbians running towards us. <coughs> this is a bit of a weird fact as well, which was on there, but I sh- I'm sure like um, a grizzly bear's bite can crush a bowling ball. A grizzly bear's bite? Yeah, can crush a bowling ball. Oh, was a bike then? Was he on a bike? A <laughs> bit <a> grizzly bear's <laughs> bike. <laughs> what do you have a grifter or something? Yeah, he's got a fucking chopper like, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he, found, he was driving he was cycling to the co-op to get his loaf of bread in the fucking mountains and he's like oh there's a bowling ball in roll <laughs> fucking get rid of that boost <laughs> <laughs> yeah so a gri- grizzly bear's bite not his bike can crush a bowling ball but I thought who's the silly bugger who found that out the hard way he took a bowling ball for camping like <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like oh right, well, okay. yeah, gotta, get a torch we need a torch and a bowling ball and some bowling shoes isn't it his wife's there cooking the beans. I'll be back in an hour. I'm just going to go bowling. <sighs> but yeah, um, got attacked by a grizzly bear on the way to the, the bowling club and oh, chucked that, that in his mouth. Yeah. And then rang a scientist and said, oh, check this out. Crunch. Crunch. We were going to go over to David Attenborough to see what he thought of the Louis and Meg Man show. But unfortunately... While filming monkeys in the Himalayan mountains, he forgot that he had a curry-flavoured pot noodle in his pocket, and they viciously attacked him. Here's the audio. No, no, no. no that is my pot noodle. My pot noodle. Step away. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Glamping combines camping with the luxury and amenities of a home or a hotel. Do you like glamping? I I find that bizarre concept. Yeah, the whole point is get away from shit and yeah, yeah. You know, go go in the outdoors and you know, it's it's a weird concept. Is it a classroom where you see all the campers, isn't you? Know, with them yurts, are they called yurts? Um, yeah, you can get it as on the ticket, can you? So you can get like a special ticket. Yeah. Um, and get like a fucking shower and all that, and you know. Wait. This the bulldog's looking at me. She likes glamping. Do you like glamping, buddy? Yeah, I do. So um, yeah, glamping. <coughs> it sounds a bit gay, doesn't it? Glamping. Uh, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> glamping. Glampers. Let's go glamping. So like, I, I I can understand with like you know you got the shit pits and all that and um, portaloos whatever. I mean, it'd be nice to get away from that, but you you just sort of expect it and you just take it on the chin, don't you? Well, yeah, if you go camping, you expect the... Yeah, yeah. Shit in the woods. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, have a shit in the woods. So there's my cap- there's the camping facts. Hmm. Woo! 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 So where have, where have you been camping? Um, generally outside. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't work inside, does it? Well, you haven't got very far to go home and just try it out in, it, in, in the front room, right? If yeah. you like it, then you can go home. I mean, it, well, well, yeah, because like a lot of people, um, a lot of like fucking parents will have a tent outside for their kids, you know, yeah. let them experience that. I mean, I used to camp in my mate's back garden, and it used to be mental. I'm not going to say who it was no. for, you know, certain reasons, but like, um, yeah, I remember we he had the shittest tent ever, and it was like... Fucking, it was like that in the middle. It just sort of sags down. And um, I remember watching this episode of Bottom where they go camping. Have you seen that? No, I don't think so. It's really funny. You should check it out. But there's a really ridiculous tent. And he says on there, he says, oh, uh, you can go anywhere in that. And he said, yeah, we probably will when the fucking wind picks up. <laughs> and that that was basically the, his tent, like, you know. 
And his nan had a bit of a problem. Um, she wasn't all there in the head, like, you know, unfortunately. Um, bit of a strange woman. And she uh, came out and attacked the tent. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. She just beat the shit out of the tent. She started slapping slapping my mate because she was a bit on the spectrum. And um, I wasn't ready for this, like, you know, because I, I, I just didn't know it was a normal occurrence. <laughs> you know, it was part of the camping experience. <laughs> yeah, I, this is my first experience camping, in it? And it's like, oh, is it normal for old women to bash the shit out of kids? And like, is, is it tradition? Have you ever been woken up by a strange noise camping? Yeah. What was it? I don't know. I didn't go to a fucking tent. Was it someone doing really bad owl, owl impressions? <laughs> and have you ever spotted a Sasquatch? No. This must be a common occurrence in America because there's people going camping and there's like sightings of Bigfoot, you know? And there's like videos of him. He's there like out doing selfies. <laughs> it's Harry! Remember, do you remember Harry and the Hendersons? Yeah. Classic. He was great, he was. Yeah, yeah, he destroyed the freaking house and they were like, you know, they were like, oh, goodbye, letting him go and everything and te- tearful. I'd be like, thank Christ for that. He's gone. <laughs> he's pinched all the fucking milk. Yeah, he's pinched all the milk. He's fucking made a right stink. He, 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 because they were saying he smelt and stuff like that, didn't they? You know, you can smell them. They smell really bad, apparently. That big, big yeah. Fuss. yeah. If you're camping by one, you'll, you'll know because he'll stink. You know? <laughs> He'd be there washing his socks in the morning. Morning! <laughs> I, I, you know, I was saying I do, do research for this camping episode. I, I had to sit and watch Carry On Camping yesterday. No way. Yeah, yeah, I did. That was that was my research. That, that was the extent of my research and a quick uh, Google search of like camping facts. Um, oh, it's fucking terrible. Carry On Camping. You, it's, oh, they're all fucking bad films, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, as you as a youth like, you'd see Barbara Windsor with her tits out and it'd be something. Because there was no, there was no uh, internet back in my day, so there was no porn. We had to get our Candy Crush request by Carrier Pigeon, you know. That'd be porn on mags, wouldn't it? In them days. Yeah, but it's ah, oh, it's just so seedy. Carry on camping, like you know. Yeah, they like, well out, aren't they? Yeah, it's just like old men chasing young girls and a um, lot of <coughs> like, you know, ooh, stuff ooh. like that. Sid James's laugh as well. <laughs> <laughs> like. It's just so, um, it's just so inappropriate, isn't it? Yeah, nowadays it is. Now. They don't put it out nowadays. Really. Yeah, I'm sure every young girl has, has heard that at one point in her life. You know, she's looking through the bras in Asda or something, and then, and then some guy just pops his head around the corner, rah, 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 and covers the bra up. Oh, jeez, it's not another fucking Sid James dirty old man. <laughs> it's just a, it's just, it must be a popular, popular thing back in the 70s, you know? Yeah. And, and and there, I don't know. It's very weird because there was like no, there was no gay people, only camp people. Like Charles Charles Hawtrey, whatever you call him, from Carry On Camping, the one with the glasses and the fucking yeah. skinny guy. Oh, hello, hello. Is that his name? Um, Charles Hawtrey. Yeah. yeah, I think that's his name. But he is <coughs> he's a very funny character. Like you know, there's a part where he knocks on the, um, the door of this woman's house, and the father comes out. Was this was this the guy that got you pregnant? So like, what, him? You must be joking. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, he's just, uh, he's a very funny character. Then you've got uh, the matron. Oh, matron! You know? It was all basically the same, wasn't it? You know, the same theme. Like, uh, if you sat in a hospital or fucking in a field with a tent. Yeah, and just like horny, horny old men chasing young girls. Hello there, this is David Frost. Here to inform you about a new show this Friday night at 9pm on BBC One. Britain's Lost Speeches, where we recall some of the greatest speeches from history. Who could forget Winston Churchill, famous and patriotic speech? A lot of people don't know, but he done a different version of the speech. But his advisers demanded he changed it believing it was too extreme for the times. After years of being hidden in a vault of the BBC, along with some information regarding Jimmy Savile, we can now at last play his first uncut version of the speech. We hope you enjoy it. We shall go on to the end. We shall fuck them in France. 
We shall fuck them on the seas and the oceans. We shall fuck with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fuck on the beaches. We shall fuck them on the landing grounds. We shall fuck in the fields and in the streets. We shall fuck in the hills. We will fuck in the local co-op. We'll fuck in the post office. In the fields of... We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not for a moment believe, the island of a large part of it was subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle until in God's good time the new world, with all its power and might, steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the old. Up yours, Hitler! <laughs>I remember, like, uh, Reading Festival and, like, but, like, the tent was leaking, so I had to sleep with a saucepan on my chest. And um, the tent pegs for the front were, like, they were fucking right by me, and every time someone went past, they'd trip up on the fucking tent peg, Yeah. and the canvas would just fall on my head. <laughs> and, I just, yeah, and I'd just, it, some people would say sorry, some people would just run away, wouldn't bother, but every time I had to get up and fucking put the tent peg back in... <laughs> Oh, it was a nightmare. And we had two tents set up. We had one for sleeping in, and there was four guys in there, um, like friends. And um, uh, That's a weird experience now. You wouldn't do that nowadays. Like, like when you're a kid, like, there's loads of you in a tent, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So we had two tents. We had one for sleeping in and then one for smoking weed in. And we had it like so the, they were both connected. So if you fancied a spliff, you'd go in the, the, the weed tent because I used to smoke quite a bit of weed back then. Yeah? Yeah, when I was 16. Um. I remember being stoned on this inflatable chair that we stole. And um, this is the year that they introduced the shit pits. Um, because before that, there was port loos, right? Yeah. So you, and what they were doing, the Slipknot and Oasis fans, because they played this, that, that year, they were fighting each other. And um, well, not on always yeah, yeah. So you had some some guy in a fucking capper and his like hat and his glasses. Ah, oh, fucking kid, you know. And then like all the all the meddlers like, I will fucking crush you. And um, yeah, they they were rioting, rioting. They were, and they what they were doing? They were setting fire to the bog paper, putting it in a port loop, closing the door. What happens is all that pressure in there, all that um, you know, the. It's, Methane, yeah. it's being sapped of oxygen, like, and yeah. there's nowhere for it to go. So all this pressure. Boils and boils, and then the top of the port loop just goes flying off into the air, really fucking hard. Wicked. And everyone's like, "Way!" You know. And it lands. So yeah, and there was like uh, helicopters, like riot helicopters and stuff, and it was mental. And um, was, that, when, was that a festival? Was that? That was Reading Festival. Um, no, it was Leeds Festival. Sorry, I was at Leeds, oh, right. two thousand. Leeds two thousand. And um, I was just watching Stoned Up on this little inflatable chair, just pissing, pissing myself. You know? <laughs> that would be, be good. Camping that way, like mm. you know, riots, like camping riots. Yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit insane. But like, so that that's when they had port loose, right? Yeah. And I don't know about any other festivals, um, but Reading now have got these things called shit pits. Have you heard of these? Yeah. So it's, it's for the listeners at home. I hope you're not eating any lunch or anything. A nice ham sandwich, um, because I'd put it down right now. I'm going to explain the shit pits. So it's a big hole, basically, a big um, cesspool of like water. Yeah, and uh, at the top you've got ten like fucking stalls, like lead. stalls. Yeah, so you shit in them, and it all goes into the same pit. Yeah. Piss. There's shit. just someone fell in one when you're doing it. That's really Jesus. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think it was him. And there was horrible, sick, twisted people camping right next to the shit pits. Like, are you crazy? Yeah, but uh, like, if we late get to a festival, that's the only place left, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, it's just horrible, like you know. As long as you're not dead winter when they got the toilets out with the machines, like. Well, that that year um, we planned 
meticulously so I get off work and go straight to the fucking Reading Festival and like there's like you've got white camping you've got green camping all that sort of stuff and then you've got like white parking green parking so I stupidly got green parking and white camping oh that's miles away yeah yeah so like I got there and they were like oh you have to take a riverboat to get to the festival so I had all this gear I was carrying everything all my ex-girlfriend's <coughs> gear and all that <coughs> getting on the fucking river boat and there's this hippie on there shouting, yeah, we're going to Reading Festival, man. <laughs> and I was just, oh, throw him overboard. Fucking hell. And um, so we get out of the boat and like, I'm stopping every, it was about half an hour walk. Maybe, yeah, about half hour, 45 minutes. But it was taking longer because like all the gear, I'd keep putting it down and just like fucking out of breath. Finally get there and I'm like, right, where's the matches? Oh, my ex left him in the car. She's looking at me. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. So I thought, oh, I need a lighter now. So there's this guy sat in it. Um, there was this guy around a campfire with like three girls. <clears throat> Typical stoner. And I said, uh, have you got a lighter? He's like, yeah, dude. Have this one, man. Just keep it. And then, so I'm like, oh, cheers for that. So I just go sit down, grab a beer and everything and just sat chilling. And then I can hear them like talking. And the girl says to the bloke, she's like, did you just give him your lighter? Yeah, man. So like, what'd you give him your lighter for? We haven't got a lighter now. Ah. Oh. <coughs> so he's like, I don't know. I'm just so stoned. He's, that's what he said. He's like, I don't know. I'm just so stoned, man. So like fucking 10 minutes later, he walks over with his tail between his legs. He's like, all right, dude, can I borrow a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> don't smoke weed, kids. It fucks with your memory. <laughs> and another thing, right? Security was quite tight that year. I don't know what it's like now. Um, the last time I went was 2013. Red, red, red is awful. Yeah, I went I went 2013 and they were checking for people for drugs on the way in. And like, well, you know, if you had a water bottle, you could put vodka in it or something like that. And like, they'd even open it up and sniff it. They, you had to, it had to be sealed, the water bottle. Yeah. So people are coming up with weird inventions and stuff like, you know, of... Um, like piss sacks strapped to your legs or something. <laughs> but like, the, secu- the one security guard, I had no fucking booze or anything on me, right? She opened up my bag and my lunch. My lunch. Fucking these big sausage fingers going over my lunch and like just checking the bag. Yeah. It was a fucking sausage, a couple of sausage rolls, you know? And uh, just ruined my lunch. I reckon he's working with a trader inside. <laughs> he's got a fucking scheme going on like, oh yeah, we've got another one, George. He's coming in now. Just wrecked his fucking lunch. Yeah, and I don't take alcohol in, in any morning. Yeah, well, um, the essential items of camping, which we'll get to in a bit, um, there's one on there, powdered beer. So, so basically... Just add water. Yeah, you just add water. So it's like in a little container, and you just like pour the powder in a glass. So you could, you could get in to Reading Festival with powdered beer. You just stick it down trousers or something. Yeah, pockets full of powder. yeah. Mm, powdered beer and I got I got my ass slapped at Reading Festival there seems to be a lot of uh, it's a bit of a younger festival and they're like kids running about someone's just slapped my ass while I was watching a band on the floor and just legged it like you know bastards but like people go there to make a cheap buck like they'll buy a ticket and then they're fucking they'll be robbing people's tents and stuff oh, I know, like that. I fucking you know? don't it idea. should be about music like it's about it's about being united you know like, yeah, there's, a, there's a feeling of like I want glass and with all the mud and all that there was like um, I know I'm not stereotyping skaters or nothing but there was a couple of skaters come down like, and they're just robbing everyone oh. you get my phone and then you're just picking up tents like, like empty and tents out I just walk off with a tent like <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> Who's um, who's those scousers that uh, Harry Enfield used to do? Now then, now then. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh that's yeah. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> um. <coughs> um, yeah. I can't remember what they were called. The scousers. Oh yeah, the scousers. Yeah, they were called the scousers. Mm. There you go. And now, ladies and gents, some comedy from Billy Connolly. Rouge. Oh. She had big rouge cheeks. Yeah. Who's Juice, moose, loose, hoose, bluege. Do you remember? Um, do you remember Devorden Festival when we done that with Stan? Yeah, we done we done two performances, didn't we? And on the same day. Yeah, and we done another one in the hall inside, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. 
So, I, yeah, I pitched the tent up in this place where he told me to pitch the tent up, the security guard. Go into the, t- uh, into the actual festival, and the guy comes around. He said, oh, did you park your, uh, did you put your tent up in that field? I was like, yeah. He said, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't put it there. He's like, well, your security guard told me I could. And he's like, no, 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 you have to put it over there. So I had to put the fucking thing down, and then walk, like, 20 minutes to another field to put it up. To the Broaden. Yeah, the Broaden Festival, yeah. Yeah, it's that close enough, I just come on. Yeah, I, I, I suppose I just wanted to have a drink, but a drink turned into a like a bottle of whiskey, and then like then like I ran you, out. You like whiskey, didn't you? Yeah, well, I did. I've given up spirits now. Yeah, yeah, for the best. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so like I had a bottle of whiskey, and I'm starting to hallucinate. I'm, I, I think that I'm on a bus stop in Newport, <coughs> having a conversation with some chap or something. I don't know what's going on. And on stage was uh, the band with the crazy makeup and shit. Um, what are they called? Oh, yeah, I'm not even watching them. Yeah. Um, Rigora Cart or something? Yeah. Yeah. They're a pretty good band, like, yeah. you know? Um, but, yeah, they, they wear crazy makeup. I'm obviously tripping my ass off, um, hallucinating because I've had so much to drink. And this band, this evil-looking band are playing, I'm just like, this is messed up. Right, so anyway, yeah, I was fucking hammered. <laughs> the long and short of it. And so we went into the, the room, and there was people performing in the room. Do you remember that? There was, like, a... Um, there was a fucking married couple and they were getting very close to the crowd and they were smiling, bringing their chairs forward and they, was, they were like, you're like the creepy Osman fucking, the way, they, the way they smile at each other. And um, I looked at my ex and I was drunk by this, very drunk by this time. And I was like, this is fucking rubbish. Look at that. <laughs> She's grabbing hold of my mouth. Shut up. And I'm like, woo, 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 woo. And, um, you know, she's just embarrassed because obviously I'm pissed. And like, you know, slagging people off, saying like, oh, this is bloody rubbish and all sorts of stuff like that. And then it's my turn to get up and play, right? I can't even play the fucking thing, you know? I'm just there, like, trying to do Angel in New York. The guy I call rubbish, he's got up with a tambourine. He's fucking helping me out. And he's doing a better job than me. So it was, oh, it's just embarrassing, like, you know. But uh, the worst part was, right, get back to the tent. And I'm fucking hammered. I start playing the guitar really loudly, making a right racket. And... um, my ex is saying, like, you know, keep it quiet and all this. Woke up in the morning. Uh, uh, before this, right, I, I was shouting in the tent, saying about the, the weird Osman, like, couple, like, you know. So I wake up in the morning, p- put my head out the t- outside the tent. Camping next to me are the fucking Osman sisters, whatever, the, the couple. Yeah. And they've obviously heard everything I've said. They're like, morning. <laughs> and then the, the, the event organiser, the actual guy who's in charge of the whole thing, the Vorden Festival, um... I can't remember his name offhand. I'm friends with him on Facebook. But he was camped um, to the to the other side. And he was like, oh, how's your head? <laughs> so, like, I don't... And he, he had me back as well. Yeah. Are you are you a talker when you when you camp? Like, when you... Do you because there's some people who are like, you know, they just don't stop talking and then you've got the guy next, next to them. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yeah, no, I'm, um, I'm a party animal. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I've always been accused of being talking too much when I'm camping. I always get like, just go to sleep, just go to sleep. And another thing I'll tell you, <laughs> it gets a bit irritating, doesn't it? Boris Johnson impressions, three o'clock in the morning. Wibble, yeah. wibble, wibble, wibble. <laughs> flat in the curve, flat, flat in the curve. Mm-hmm. Okay, flat in the curve. <laughs> so, um, but I think camping is like associated uh, with relaxation tapes as well, you know. So it's like if you go on YouTube and you want to get to sleep, it acts as white noise, so you can have like the sound of rain falling on a canvas tent. Oh, yeah, that's good. You know, yeah. Or, like um, whales. Yeah, whales. Uh, <laughs> owls. It's just uh, or, or owl impressions to go to sleep with. Um, a oh, man doing impressions of an owl. So you could do it. <laughs> See, everyone's got a phone now, though, aren't they? So you log on, like, you know, yeah, yeah, YouTube, yeah, yeah, just, just, just you authentic that. camping sounds, yeah. <laughs> like, that's the sound of an owl mating with a, a chimp, <laughs> um, chimpanzee. So, have you fixed your squeaky shoe from the last episode? <laughs> I can't remember that. No, it was a bit squeaky, it was, was it? yeah, um, yeah, M4, M4 noises. To go to sleep to? Sounds of the M4? No, I quite like that. Outside a busy junction in Luton. I quite like that. See, the motorway noise. Um, well, I suppose, like, if, if you can hear it faintly in the distance, but you wouldn't want the, you know, no, people, no, people no. beeping their own. Get out of the fucking way, bud. 
<laughs> trying to fucking drive here. Just listening to that, trying to get to sleep. Uh, how about a moustache being brushed along the wall? That could be a relaxation tape. Yeah. <sighs> Someone slowly rubbing their chin over our text. Yeah, yeah. See, that would be on John Peel's playlist. Yeah. You know, because he used to play mental stuff on the radio, didn't he? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of a man falling down the stairs with pots and pans attached to his legs. Um, yeah, he used to play some weird shit. So, camping gear, right? This is like the... This is this is the glamping shit. I had a look on this website. Bumper dumper, right? This is a toilet that fits on the back of your car. Well, that's a good idea, that is. I suppose, yeah, it fits on the bumper. So you like. go a long way to water glass if you want to dump it, don't you? Out in a car park, right? Yeah, I wouldn't advise using it on the M4. <laughs> Just getting out and taking a shit. But yeah, it actually sits on the dump, uh, the, the bumper. I'm calling it the dumper now. The bumper dumper. That's a good idea, that is. Yeah, yeah. I just imagine him on Dragon's Den now. So, what, so what's this invention called? It's <laughs> called the bumper dumper. <laughs> but I don't like it because, like, the word of it, dumper, you know. <laughs> but it, I wouldn't. You'd have to buy. It, you'd have to buy it online. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't be able to walk into the shop and buy one because you'd be walking around with this big bloody thing, and people think, yeah, he's going to be shitting in that one day. Yeah. And well, I, don't, I don't like the idea of that. Uh, so the sleeping bags, we got a, one that's like a bear, Jabba the Hut. Right, um, shark, but yeah, can you imagine waking up next to Jabba the Hutt? Yeah, it's a bit, a bit of like, a bit of uh, to drink as well. Yeah, well this is the worst if you had a drink, right? Field patterned tents. So a tent that's actually got grass on it and a oh, picture of a sheep. That's just ridiculous. So you're looking for your fucking tent and yeah. it's, it's just basically camouflaged. Yeah. You know? Well, that would be the same as that when you we went to Glastonbury and we had a Euro Hike 220. Mm. Like the first dome tents, you know, the little ones. Yeah. And we had one of them, the yellow one. So what have we got there? The Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army shoe. The Swiss Army shoe. That, that'd be the thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, you just like, you got like a tin opener on one side and like... A file and a knife on the <clears> other side. Wasn't that a villain in the Bond film? Yeah, he's sort of a, a sort of Swiss Army shoe man. Because there was a guy who threw his hat. Do you remember him? Ob job. Ob job, yeah. So we could have a Swiss Army guy. Just takes his shoe off and throws it here. And a fucking, you get impaled by a tin opener. Yeah. That's how you don't get stabbed by the scissors. <laughs> yeah. Because a, a, a little toothpick as well in there, you know? Yeah. They're quite dear, those Swiss Army shoes, are they? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're trying to explain to me, you're trying to say to me this is a real thing. Yeah. Right, I'm Googling it. <laughs> the killer of conversations. Swiss. I don't. I can't even believe I'm actually doing this. Army shoe. A few moments later. There's no. There isn't a Swiss army shoe. Well, there's a gap in the market then, obviously, in there. Well, there you go. Coming soon. From the same people that gave you the eye carrot. And the I hat comes the all new sensational Swiss Army shoe. It comes with all the items you'd expect and love. Impress your friends by cutting their toenails with a swift thrust of your leg with the handy scissors. What's that, Grandma? Biscuit crumbs in your teeth from gouging on bourbons while watching Countdown? No problem. With a swift kick to the mush, with your handy toothpick extension, those gnashes will be clean as a thistle. Oh dear, Grandad Stairmaster has stopped halfway up the stairs again. No problem, give it a firm judo kick with your trusty screwdriver extension. But watch out for that accelerator! The Swiss Army Shoe, available at all DIY stores. Not to be used whilst playing football or line dancing. So, this is the uh, the next invention on the list for the glamping, Super Kimbos. Do you know, do you know what these are? No. So, it was on. I, I, it's just a video to explain it, but like, um, it's basically a pair of pants where you don't have to take off to have a shit. Because there's a zip that goes from the top all the way to the back, all the way around. You just open it, and that's your, you know. Well, I can't think of anything worse than that. Yeah. It's like, it's, I think, is this for camping people, or is this for alcoholics? <laughs> or incontinent people? So the inflatable lounge chair. 
This is just fucking silly because the the picture online is like you think of a, a big three seater leather sofa. Yeah. That, but inflatable. I remember when one of them chairs were all the thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the block chairs. <laughs> but you know when, like, you you're watching the show, like the, the festival, and there's some fucker in front of you with like ridiculous umbrellas and chairs and all sorts. They they basically took their whole kitchen into into the the festival, like you know, yeah, they're smoking a pig over a big fire char charred. My mate used to be like that. Like, used to be <laughs> Oh, nipper, uh, you should um, have a, like, a half a mini trailer. <laughs> and they should have fill it up like, what's all this Crazy. shit? Yeah, he's, you know, just like fucking candlelit dinner, you know, yeah. pissing down rain. They're just there with their, their, their tablecloth and everything. A fucking a waiter as well. Um, my, they have like a, a gazebo as well, gaze, gazebo, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, the inflatable chair, I don't think I'd like someone to be in front of me with the inflatable chair. You always get like... I mean, I went to a machine head gig in Cardiff and there was like this irritating bloke in front of me. He was just ir- irritating because he was very tall. And um, oh, I hate people like that. Yeah. Because everyone's taller than me. I couldn't see in front of him. And he was, every time, like, it was weird because he was headbanging and he'd headbang for like about 10 seconds and then just stop. So, yeah, and he had really long hair. So he's going like that. And I was taking a video um, and he was fucking headbanging and his hair was going everywhere and his hair got caught in my phone. And, like, I think, what do I do? <laughs> so, like, I'm thinking, I either tap him on the shoulder and say, excuse me, but your yeah, fucking ear's caught in my phone, or I just pull it out really quick. <laughs> I chose the latter. <laughs> so I, I, I pulled it out really qu- as quick as I could. And he thought he'd been stung by a wasp or something. He's, he's turned around, and I just played dumb. I was just like, what? You know. He's like, fucking hell, dude. There's fucking wasps in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's running out screaming. Oh, he's got the fear. He's got the fear bad, man. Must have brought him on a whitey, like. So, um, the powdered beer. No, that's 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 crazy. That's... It's a good idea for, like, you know, security guards. You know, you get searched and everything. Just stick a load of powdered beer down your trousers. Yeah. You know? Mm. But it's a bit of a... I mean, I don't like the idea of powdered beer. No, I can't. It can't be healthy. No, I can't. But I suppose you get powdered coffee. I love powdered coffee when I go to, to festivals. They, I'll tell you a, an invention. Um, there was a guy I was going to college with, and his father worked in like some factory or something. Um, and he gave me a can of uh, like coffee, and you squeeze it, and there's some chemical outside of the actual can that warms it. That warms it. Mm. And I don't know if they still do these, but this was like a prototype, and he had loads of them, and he was bringing them in for me, and I was uh, drinking them. I, was, I, I thought it was fucking great on the bus going to college. And, um, like, they they never made it to the shop, so I'm thinking, what was wrong with these cans? You know? And that, that that's a weird thing, because funnily, that year, I grew a tail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I most probably fucking discontinued, because, like, there was something in them. Uh, barbecue fishing rod. A barbecue fishing rod. This is one of the, uh, the camping gear. A fishing rod that what you can use for? Yeah, so basically you've got a fit. I mean, people like to toast marshmallows and shit, don't they? So you, you put your marshmallow on your fishing rod and just like throw your line out. All right. <laughs> and you just there. Uh, I mean, it's good for kids, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Well, I, I reckon my daughter Ava would love that. You are love. So I put a chicken you know, on give this. A word, give a word of that then, because I see what she says. Yeah, bar- a barbecue fishing rod. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... But the only problem is she can only use it when she's camping. Oh, that's yeah. just, that's... And I suppose, like, it's the kids and fire is not a good mix, really. No. I remember when my brother was, like, about four years old. Yeah, I remember when my brother was younger. <laughs> we had to cut, because my gear's being a bastard. Um, yeah, he fell in He fell in uh, the fire. Head first into the fire, and we had to pull him out. Wow, wow. And it was quite amusing, really, because he was dressed as, like, uh, Paddington Bear. He had this big, like, uh, flammable, flammable <laughs> smack on, like, in it. So it's like they were trying to get rid of him. Oh, another kid. We're getting things are a bit tight this year. Throw him on the fire. Um, yeah. Oh, back in the day, you'd go through about 10 kids a year. Yeah. You know? Oh, you have a book full of kids, you're going to them on fire. Yeah, yeah. Another one. It's like dogs. People go through about 30 dogs a year before they invented dog leads. Yeah. You just take them, take them for a walk and they'd be fucking gone. <laughs> you know? So. Um, 
This is the last one on the camping gear list, glow-in-the-dark toilet paper. Now, I mean, I suppose, like, it's dark, you wake up. Who has a shit at tw 2 o'clock in the morning anyway? You usually wait till the morning, don't you? Well, yeah. But, like... Generally, it's Monday morning when you're home. Yeah. You're like, oh, where's the toilet paper? Well, just put a, f put a fucking lighter on, use your flashlight, find your toilet paper. Or you could buy glow-in-the-dark toilet paper to find it, have a shit outside, and then everyone will see your shitty toilet paper because it's fucking lit up in lights. <laughs> So I think that's a shit invention. What do you reckon? Um, yeah. No, would, you, would you use it? No. no. So if you, do you do you ever tell stories with the torch underneath your face? At no. Camping? No. And his face was made of mustard. No. Dun, dun, dun. I'm do. Yeah. I have to take my uh, my daughter camping one day and tell her some scary stories with the torch. You know. <laughs> have you ever heard of a polter goose? <laughs> Bloody! I, I don't. Maybe it's not a good idea. She'd be terrified after you know trying to calm her down three o'clock in the morning. Don't worry, Ava. There's 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 no such thing as a pot of goose. No, there is that. You told me. <laughs> and uh, Sasquatches, they they only they only go where there's local co-ops. Um, <laughs> there's no co-ops around here, so we're fine. <laughs> we're secure. Do you hear about that bank? Robbery the other day. No. W what, hap what happened, Mush? This bloke runs into the bank, screaming, waving a gun around. He shouts, put all the money in the bag, and no one gets hurt. Th then, what, then, then what happened, Mush? They kicked him out for not wearing his mask. Caravan holidays. No. No? No. No? No. Caravans, no. Don't do caravans. Yeah, I, I kind of like caravans because it reminds me of, like, going on holiday when I was younger with my old man, like, you know, um, because... I had a 60-foot satellite one, like, you know? Um, they just put on bricks and stuff, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, we never, we, never, we never had a caravan. We always went to a place with yeah. a caravan. Um, just cheaper, innit? But, yeah, I mean, like... When I was younger, I'd go to these places like fucking Barry Islands and Butlins and Pontins. Do you remember Pontins with the crocodile? Yeah. The, the kids used to go, some guy, some poor sap would, would, who worked for the fucking, uh, you know, Pontins. You'd have to get suited up every once a month and the kids would beat the shit out of them. Well, make rugby tackle the beef, big, big uh, beef eater in, <laughs> in, in, in Summerfield. Crazy. He's like, you fucking kids will be the death of me. <laughs> chasing, chasing him around fucking ponds. Yeah, having a whale of a time. Just beat the shit out of a crocodile, Dad. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's like everything you do in these, these fucking caravan holiday parks, right? You have to, like, give them your chalet keys. Like, uh, you know, the, um, if it's, it's either a caravan or a chalet. I, I really like the chalets, you know. Um, it's just It just reminds me of my youth vlog, you know. Yeah. But oh, the state of some of these chalets. I remember one that was like fucking. It was completely leaked, you know. Like I don't know what the last people done in there. You know, fucking druggies or something. But it was like it was a right mess. My dad gave the keys back. He said, "I can't fucking." But everything you do in these places, right? You want a fucking sandwich? Chalet key. You want a sausage roll? Like you need a piss? You have to hand in your chalet keys as security for everything you do. So if you want a game of crazy golf. You're handing your chalet keys. I think it's like proof of like, you know, purchase, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're actually staying there. So it's like everything's inclusive. But yeah, crazy golf, handing your chalet keys, you know. Swimming pool, handing your chalet keys. Yeah. It's almost like a get out of jail free card. See an old woman eating really loudly, pissing you off. Give her your chalet keys. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> Keep it down. You crazy woman I'm trying to eat. Um, yeah, so... But uh, I remember Crazy Golf. Do you like Crazy Golf? Um, it's crazy. It's nothing crazy about it, really, is it? Oh, it is. It's insane. <laughs> it's positively insane. I, I, I went to Newquay with my ex, and um, we, we saw this Crazy Golf place because there was a zoo, and I, I wanted. To, I, I was like a little kid, like, you know, I want to go to the zoo. <laughs> so we went to the zoo, and I'm fucking running around, stroking gibbons, and having a whale of a time, you know. Ooh, monkeys. Hangs. Yeah. <laughs> Just like rocket, I remember this one monkey, right? He was fucking whacking the shit out of the window with a stick. 
<laughs> going crazy. <laughs> We're going to stick back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my stick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was just going mental, like, and I just got it on video. I thought it was great. He got turtle shagging as well, and like, <coughs> he had a big smile on his face. This turtle, and he was going for it. Um, very funny, but um, yeah. So we a turtle, yeah, turtle. I can't imagine him being very fast a bit, it, like. No, he was very slow. You know, it was it was smooth love making. It was like Marvin Gaye. Um, but as you walked outside of the zoo, right in front of you was the the crazy golf, and I'm looking at it. I'm a man of conflicted interests, you know what I mean? I'm looking, and I'm just like, oh, which way do I go? The zoo or the crazy golf? So, like, the next day, I said, right, we're going to that crazy golf place. Went there, right? And uh, there was a woman at the counter. I said, oh, um, two for crazy golf, please. She said, oh, uh, no. Sh- chalet keys? No, we didn't have to do the chalet <laughs> keys. This was older. It wasn't a camping trip, like, or a chalet thing. But, yeah, she goes, oh, uh, I'm sorry, the guy who does the crazy golf is ill today. And um, so we, we're close. And I said, uh, what's wrong with him? Did, has he gone crazy? <laughs> and it's the worst joke ever. And I'm just like laughing at my own joke because I'm sad like that. So I'm just stood there laughing and chuckling. And she just like didn't even break a smile. And she just went, no, like that. So I think she's heard that one many, many times. <laughs> Maybe he's gone crazy. Crazy Hank. He's mm. gone, gone turbo. Yeah, went crazy. Couldn't take it. Just, it's a stressful life. Yeah. Um, well, people were going out in all directions, hitting balls everywhere. Yeah. God. But yeah, there was, a, there was a kid in one of the caravan old days where we went crazy golfing and he, he was fucking mental. Like, he was smashing the shit out of these balls and like, he wasn't even, he, he wasn't um, restricted like to the golf course. He was throwing them wherever he wanted, you know. So that's when you, that's when it's real crazy golf. When you, that's... when you vacate the crazy golf course and you're up on the roof throwing balls at people, you know, that's, yeah. That's when it goes insane. Yeah, after he's going to get his and hit golf balls off the top of the roof. Oh, it's crazy. But I, I won um, crazy golf uh, at the place in, just up by, where is it? By Lydney. There's a place, Tourist Crafts. And there's a fucking crazy golf place there. I went there with a, another ex-girlfriend. Every, every ex-girlfriend I got has had crazy golf at one point in their life. And um, I got a little trophy, like I got a, a piece of, well, I got a piece of paper saying I'm a crazy golf champion because I beat it. So I didn't have to do the washing up for two weeks. Um, it's just like I get a jail, get a jail free card. I, I showed it everywhere. Every time she asked me to do something, I was like, whoop, paper, I got golf, crazy golf champion. Remember? Yeah, I was using it to park in like uh, disabled spots and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> just put it on the the windshield mark, you know. Uh, crazy golf champion. There's uh, the, the car park attendant comes over. You can't park there. I can. I'm the crazy golf champion. Oh, so can't fuck go. off. Can't go. Hmm? Yeah, and I, I've played. Um, oh, where did I play? I played. Have you ever played a like a fucking one of these holiday camps? Yeah, with the band. Oh, um, no. Or just like you know. No. It's an experience. Yeah, yeah. You don't feel very rock and roll, like you know. You finish your first set, and then some guy comes up, some old pe- bloke, and says, like, "Right, let's do the bingo." Yeah, you know. And you're waiting to go back on and do your second act to three people, um, uh, a two family, which, two of which you won't be on the bar. Yeah, and a family from Bogner, <laughs> and Jim from Bargoid with his family. You want to play them a bit of stereophonics, back? Uh, off nicks. Yeah. And uh, bingo is a weird... I mean, oh, it's just so boring. Bingo. Um, and he's... Uh, two fat ladies, 88. You've got all that sort of stuff. So I was making my own. When I got back on, I said, oh, you know, bingo calling to make it a bit more exciting. Like, uh, man shitting in the woods. 64! 64! <laughs> Old lady munching on a pot noodle loudly. 66! <laughs> Both full of balls. 69. What? What is 69? What? Uh, when bingo calling, what do they say? So it's Mouth, like mouthful two, full of balls, isn't it? Mouth full of balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's not <laughs> fucking bingo call. Mouth full of balls. Sixty nine. Yeah, yeah Kenny's eye number one. Mouth full of private private parts. Sixty nine. Um, two two legs eleven. You've got legs eleven. Yeah. Um, all in uh, something like that for I don't know. How do we get the bingo call in? <laughs> I'm trying to think of bingo calls now. Two, du- two little ducks. Two little ducks, what's that? 22. 22. 
Two little ducks, 22. There you go. Old lady with a munching on a ham sandwich very loudly, 16. I, I, mine are just rubbish, like, you know, they don't make any sense. And that's the beauty of it. Um, yeah. So, best festival. What, the best festival I've been to, or? Yeah, the best festival you've been to, because of music or um, just the camp in a mean <laughs> Yeah. Festival of shit, but that was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work like that, does it? We had great chips, but the bands were fucking awful. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, um, yeah, local festivals are usually pretty good, eh? Yeah, yeah, a lot of local know. festivals, because, you know, you, you always find the, the town, you know the town drunk, you know the town nutter. Um, yeah. And because it's me, I don't get any beef. <laughs> 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 but I, I, for me, my favourite... So what was your favourite again? We didn't get to it, did know, we? Um, probably... Uh, they went to Glastonbury and my, was that hot we went uh, a few times with um, Morris dancing yeah we went three years in a row so yeah. you had like a, a green room and all that yeah. and yeah. yeah and Shirley Bassey was like yeah. badgering you for some biscuits and stuff yeah yeah. she's yeah, she's yeah. one of our uh, avid listeners apparently is she? yeah she emailed me yesterday oh cool she, uh, she was <clears throat> listening <clears throat> in a hotel room coked off her tits yeah Shirley Bassey darling she said, I like your jingle. Your jingle is incredible. <laughs> Goldfinger. Row, row, row. He's the man, the man with the greasy mustache. Really but you must wall. not touch. Um, I, what is the lyrics to that song, anyway? He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Or something like that. And I thought that was good. Be, that should be the lyric. Yeah. Louis and McMahon show where we talk about bullshit, but you must not touch. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. If you've been listening to the Louis and McMahon show, uh, written by Louis Layton, performed by Stephen Merritt and Louis Layton. Uh, the recording and editing was done by me. The shit voices were me too. Um, if anybody wants to give me an Oscar for my Morgan Freeman impression, drop me a line. Till next week, you twats. <laughs> <laughs>